The RTX 4090 is an absolute monster of a graphics card, providing high frame rates at 4K. I wanted to see how much further we could boost its performance through overclocking. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Last week I reviewed the MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio graphics card and was quite impressed with it. The card itself has good build quality, has good thermals under load, wasn't too loud, and most importantly is blazing fast when it comes to gaming, especially at 4K. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, I couldn't tackle overclocking in that review, so I thought I'd make some follow-up content pieces for you guys exploring different topics, with overclocking being one of them. Out of the box, this card is a beast, but I was curious about finding out how much faster it'll be once overclocked, especially because we haven't gotten a frequency jump from Nvidia in quite some time. Now spoiler alert, and I'm sure you've probably got a good idea on how this video is going to turn out based on the thumbnail, but the results I achieved from this card overclocked were underwhelming. We'll get into all the details later on in the video. First, I want to quickly go over the test system specifications. The CPU is an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X, which has been overclocked using PBO2 and Curve Optimizer, cooled by an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO, and is paired with 32GB of Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 memory, which is running at 3800 Mega Transfer CL14. The motherboard is an MSI X570 Unify. For our storage, we have a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD. And powering the entire system is an EVGA G3 1000W 80 Plus Gold Certified Power Supply. The operating system installed on this test system is Windows 10 Pro, as that is what the vast majority of users are still on. If you're interested in full system specs, check the video description down below. As for my overclocked settings, I had used MSI Afterburner with the voltage and power slider completely maxed out. I was able to attain plus 205 MHz to the core and plus 1700 to the memory, effectively running it at 24.4 gigabits per second. Now I did also apply a custom fan curve where I had basically set the fans to a static 60% fan speed when under load. I will be showing you guys some results on thermals, but just know it's not a direct apples to apples comparison with stock. However, when it comes to overclocking, this is the time where I'd suggest playing around with a custom curve so that you can get the most out of your overclock. Because if you let the card run warm, it's going to scale back clock speeds and then it kind of just defeats the whole purpose of overclocking in the first place. Let's start off with boost frequency behavior. Previously, using the stock configuration, the card averaged 2700 MHz during time spike streams second benchmark. With our overclock applied, we can see basically the same exact behavior, except overall frequencies are higher by around 200 megahertz. We averaged 2914 MHz during this test with our overclock applied, so that is a considerable jump. Moving to a gaming workload like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a bit of a lighter workload, we can see that our GPU's core frequency is hovering around 3000 MHz, which is pretty good. It definitely is kind of astonishing to see a GPU running at 3 GHz when the GPUs from the previous generation would sit at around 1800 to 2000 MHz. Compared to the MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio stock config, we're looking at a 255 MHz uplift in frequency when it comes to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is pretty good. Taking a quick look at thermals, and even though we're overclocked and power limits are also higher, we can see considerably better temps during Time Spy Extreme's second benchmark. Like I said, I had to utilize a custom fan curve, which was used in tandem with overclocking so I could get the most out of it, and I would suggest doing the same if you plan on overclocking your GPU. I had the fan speed set at 60%, which would run them at around 2000 RPM, and while there was noise, I wouldn't call it obnoxious by any means. I personally prefer to have just a static fan curve when doing overclocks. I can deal with a bit of noise, but what I can't stand is the sound of fans ramping up and down. Nonetheless, it's great to see that even with just raising the fan speed to 60%, temps for the GPU core, hotspot, and memory are all relatively low. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can see a similar story. Temps are a little bit better than what we saw in Time Spy, and compared to our stock config, they are considerably lower. Along with that, as I had pointed out in my review, memory temps are also excellent, as this time around MSI have taken this portion seriously and we can see that here. 
Power consumption is up next, and of course we see a rise in overall GPU power consumption. During Time Spy, the GPU averaged 450 watts of power consumption and peaked at 465 watts. That is a 4% increase to overall power usage. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we can see a larger difference at 7% for the average power consumption, while the GPU peaked at 435 watts under load. So keep that figure in your head as we take a look at the gaming benchmarks. Before we jump into those, I just wanted to take a look at one synthetic benchmark and that was of course 3D Mark Times by Extreme. When stock, the MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio scored 19,288, which by itself was already a pretty impressive score. When overclocked though, we jump up by 1,312 points, or a 7% improvement. So far, so good, considering our power consumption went up by around 4% in this test. Moving on to gaming, and unlike my previous GPU reviews where I take a look at a couple games when overclocking, I thought I'd run tests on all the games I included in my review. Since this GPU is getting quite a lot of attention, I thought I'd include more data this time around, and I personally just wanted to know how performance scales went overclocking this new Ada Lovelace-based GPU, especially since we're running at around 3 gigahertz in gaming. The first game we have is Total War Warhammer 3, and when looking at our average frame rate, we have an 8% increase, and our 1% lows are also better by 10%, so I'd say we're already off to a pretty decent start. In Forza Horizon 5, the increase isn't too large this time, where our average frame rate is only better by 4%, while our 1% lows are a little bit worse, but it's basically within margin of error. In Hitman 3, we're actually bottlenecked at 4K, which is pretty amazing, but also a little bit of a letdown since nothing really changes. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see decent GPU scaling at 7% for our average frame rate, and 5% for the 1% lows. Still, I have to point out that at stock, its performance at 4K was already quite stellar, and I'll be expanding on that a little bit later on in the video. In Red Dead Tomb, when overclocked, our average FPS improved by 7%, while our 1% lows jumped up by 11%, so that's actually a pretty good result. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is up next, and we see some pretty surprising results. Our average frame rate jumped up by a whopping 18%, and our 1% lows also improved by 15%. I know this game is quite GPU bound, but I still wasn't expecting performance to go up by that much just from overclocking, but hey, that's good to know. Far Cry 6 is up next and is another Ubisoft title, but unfortunately, unlike Assassin's Creed, we don't see the same sort of performance uplift. Just a mere 4% boost to our average FPS and 5% to the 1% lows. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next, and this was the game I was hoping I'd see a significant performance boost. Despite a 9% uplift to our average FPS, it's just a 7 FPS increase, which isn't going to be that noticeable, and the 1% lows are also increased by just 5 FPS. In Gears 5, while the average frame rate gets a bit of an increase, the 1% lows benefit quite a lot from our overclock, where now we're sitting at 87 FPS, and that's a 40% increase. Control is another GPU bound title in our list here. With our overclocked configuration, our average FPS sees an increase of 6% and our 1% lows improve by 5%. Horizon Zero Dawn is another title which sees some decent gains. Here we can see that the difference between stock and overclocked is 8% for our average FPS. Meanwhile, our 1% lows go up by a similar margin at 7%. The last game was Doom Eternal, and here we can see performance is basically within margin of error for this title. Taking a look at our 12 game average, and our overall average FPS improved by 5%, and our 1% lows improved by a bit more than that at just 6%. I have to say, after looking at the results, I'm not blown away by them. I mean, sure, there were a few exceptions where overclocking did improve performance by a considerable margin, but the stock performance of this card is already so good and along with that, the differences in most titles wouldn't really be that noticeable anyway. Overclocking any hardware can be quite time consuming because you have to test your settings using stress tests to ensure that it's stable so that when you're actually using it, you don't crash. Taking these results into consideration and it just doesn't seem like it's worth the hassle, honestly. I know someone might say, well, who cares, it's free performance, but that's not technically true since power consumption does also go up considerably, so there's that trade-off you have to take into account. For me personally, I would just run the cart at stock, like I said, performance out of the box is already stellar, and now that I know that overclocking isn't really worth it, I now have my sights set on undervolting and power limiting the card. Can we maintain this card stock gaming performance while using considerably lower power, or perhaps we might even gain some performance while using lower power? 
So stay tuned for that because that will be the next topic I tackle for my next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.